All right. Well, welcome everybody. We're gonna walk on the Tortugas Dam in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Uh, and I wanna thank Kathy and Lynn Tanner for hosting uh, the program. This, their, uh, the Tanner Tradition Art Gallery is in Rio Doso, New Mexico. And at the end of the program, I'll have um, website addresses for both the Tanner um, Tradition gallery and mine and if you're not on our email list please please join it so here we go i'm going to start by showing you um a drone footage of the larger pieces that are on the dam this is a really cool view the road runner that you see over here is over 50 feet long. I think it's 55. It's 45 from the elbow to the ear on that uh, cougar. And this footage was shot in September of 2020. So uh, we'll have another couple of views a little, a little later on. Uh, this is the top of the dam. My dog Bandit is my constant companion up there. Uh, this is University Avenue for those people who come to Las Cruces. There's a white car coming out at an intersection up here and that road is desert sands. Uh, a lot of people will park along the edge in the desert back in this area and then they walk the dam. Um, I started walking the dam in January 2017, after my mother passed away, she was 95. I used to walk to her house every morning, mile and a half there, mile and a half back, three mile walk, and we'd have breakfast together. And uh, when she passed away, I decided I didn't want to walk in uh, the development anymore. And I had seen people walking on the dam, so I was very interested in, in finding out what this was about. As I was walking on the dam, I noticed these rows of rocks and every day they would seem to get a little further along. I didn't know who was doing them. And it was a year later before I met John and Greg and they were the people that were putting these little rows of rocks along the path to the dam. <clears throat> During that year, I would gather up uh, white and yellow and black and red rocks and I put them right at the end of their row and I would wait and see the next time they came up how far they got. Usually they just put a few rocks each day. So after, oh let me introduce you to some of my helpers. This, I could never do this big project all by myself. This is Greg and he's throwing some rocks down that Eric delivered to me with big truck. Uh, this is Mary with a backpack on. And she is, uh, she's been bringing rocks for quite a while. Uh, this is Sam. Sam made a rock shaw. And he, he really gets into the carrying the rocks. And he's actually delivered several tons of rocks up to the dam for me to work with. This is Eric and he brings the red tile. Uh, I think Eric has a bottomless pit of tile. This is Hank and he just unloaded an entire truck load of um, landscape flagstone for me to use. And this is how it goes. The community is out there bringing me stuff and I get to create the art. I don't have to go uh, foraging. So these are bottles that people bring to me, hundreds and hundreds of bottles. As I walk along the dam every once in a while, I find uh, painted rocks. Now these are the mystery artists. They, um, they don't sign their name and we don't know who did them, but they're a lot of fun to find. And sometimes I imagine you might find them in your neighborhood. Those are, that's a cute one. And this is our local art critic. My, uh, my dog Bandit lets me know when the coyotes are around. He has a whole completely different stance when he sees or, or smells a coyote. 
as the rocks were trailing along, I decided I got a little tired of just putting rocks at the end and I gathered up my colors, red and yellow, black and white, and went a ways down the road from the path of rocks and started to design. And I thought, I'll find out how long it takes them to get to my design. So this is the beginning of a medicine wheel. White at the top, north, yellow for east, black for west, and red for south. I added crosses into the medicine wheel to create the cross in the center of the wheel and two more crosses for Las Cruces, the three crosses. This is a painting that I did with a medicine wheel uh, in it and some magpies. And here's a bear I photographed at a rescue center and a box turtle that crawls around in our backyard every summer. We don't keep her, so we just let her, let her go to she because she's got gold eyes. And this is a painting I did called The Tortoise and the Bear. So from all of this, starting a rock design using those four colors, red and yellow, black and white. I did a pinwheel design on a turtle. And this is what the turtle looks like in the rain. The colors are so brilliant when it rains. And this is gonna be my bear. And the bear is walking on an eagle feather. This eagle's name is Spirit. He's from a rescue center. And this is a painting I did of Spirit. This painting is called a kinetic painting. There's actually two original paintings in Scratchboard that are sawed apart and put together on angles. So this is one painting on, on the left side, the center view where you see both paintings at the same time, and the final painting on the right side. Spirit is wounded and can't fly, and so I make him fly in my paintings. This is my rock eagle. It's the largest piece I did all by myself with me carrying the rocks up. The stars and stripes that go off from the eagle connect to a horse. And there's the horse in the rain. This is the spot run. I put this in because it's got those four nation colors, yellow man, white man, red man, black man. And that's a print. And this is an original, uh, doesn't have a print. It's watercolor on white clay, painting the, the watercolor on the clay. And then I use a knife and I cut all the detail into the painting, each vein of the feather and the texture of the horse. And this is Dallas Dreams. And here's, whoops, here's Dallas. Back on the eagle again. Unfortunately, we do have occasional, uh, some damage up there. And somebody took their four wheeler and drove through the middle of the eagle and destroyed it. I started to repair the, this particular piece. I was starting to put the eye back in. And the next day they really creamed it. They went back and forth and spun their wheels and uh, destroyed it completely. So I moved the horse, the horse was gone too, along with a few other pieces. I moved it down to the other end of the dam. I moved the eagle down the side of a hill, a little further down. And somebody brought a hawk feather and put it on the new eagle. Horn toads. I haven't seen many horn toads around since we moved here in the 70s, but there's quite a few up on the den. This is a little hatchling, very tiny. You can tell by the size of my hand in it. And here's my rock horn toad. Manu is a rescue wolf I photographed up in northern New Mexico. This is a scratchboard painting of Manu. <clears throat> When I'm working on the rocks, I oftentimes will be asked, what am I making? And my response is, do you want to know or do you want to guess? And if they're going to be there a short time, they usually want to know. 
So I got to a point on this where I thought it really did look like a wolf and some people were calling it an owl. So I decided I better put some paw prints in there to help define it a little better. And this is it after a rain. You can see how beautiful the colors are. My recommendation for seeing this is a cloudy day or um, early in the morning before the sun gets on them. They're easier to see. New Mexico Zia design. This is the Zia design in a basket and uh, it's called Masia Harvest. Oops. This is the smallest rock art on the dam. It's about 18 inches from the top knot to the tail of a gamble quail. And I had a request for a Coco Kelly, so I did one of those. And we do have some tarantulas up there in the summertime, inspired my spider. Whoops, I keep hitting the wrong button there. Sorry about that. Anyway, the spider and it's in a web and tarantulas don't build a web, but I've got my artistic license active there. This is called Mama Can I Keep Him? There's a bullfrog and the baby. And on the dam, when it rains in monsoon season, the frogs start singing and they go on for days and days, thousands and thousands of frogs all croaking at once. And it is quite a buzz. So this frog is catching a fly. And there's my dog bandit supervising. A fox. A fox from a rescue center. This is a middle view of a kinetic painting. I always start the paintings by drawing what I want the middle view to look like. So this is the left side, the right, the, the center, I'm sorry, the center and the right side. And those are scratch board. Bandits up on top of the dam. These buckets are from Eric and they are also from the Toro rock quarry. And Eric brings buckets of rock to me. At one time it was buckets, now he brings truckloads of rock. I have a pile of rocks. Somebody decided that they were gonna make something too. And so they made this lizard. But unfortunately I cleared all this land off from weeds to make some artwork for myself. So I had to take the lizard apart and begin my tiger swallowtail butterfly. My original intention was not to put the butterfly on a flower, but as I started doing the flower, I made a rose and put the butterfly on it. And then of course the rose needed a stem. And then the stem grew into some leaves and it just kept kind of expanding from there. This piece is called Walks with God. This is uh, two original scratch boards that are sawed apart and put together on angles. This is the right side, the center, and the left side. This is a 15 foot rattlesnake. There's its rattlers. It's a diamond back. There's the pattern for the diamond back. I love to look at snakes, but I like them from a distance. Now you baseball fans, this is an Arizona Diamondback. Recognize the Arizona flag? I grew up part of the time in Arizona. Howling Coyote, Cottontail, and my Monarch Butterfly and my, my uh, tug of war with the ants. I built the butterfly, every summer the ants bury it, and every winter I unbury it. It's been going on for four years. There me, there's me cleaning it out. All better, ready for next summer. Dragonfly. Now I have decided that somebody doesn't like bugs because this dragonfly has been kicked apart three times and I've built it four times. So this is the original dragonfly. 
little marbles. That's its flight pattern. And there it is. Somebody decided they didn't like the dragonfly. So I started putting it together again. It took me several days to make it originally, but putting it together was just about an hour. And later on, I added more marbles because the marbles had been stolen. And there it is all finished. Walking out one morning, a great horn owl sitting on the top of the corner of my house. This is a painting of a great horn owl. It's a scratch board. And I'm using a knife to cut into watercolor and expose the clay and then glaze with oils. And the inspiration for this piece, of course, is the great horn owl. And this is mama with her babies. This is a rainbow trout. Unfortunately, it got destroyed when the eagle and the horse got destroyed. Somebody wrote a little message to me with white rock. So sad, I agreed. But I rebuilt it in another location. And the green glass came from my friends Sandy and Jim in Bluffdale, Texas. They mailed it to me. This is an acrylic. Uh, using a palette knife of a cougar. And here are my inspirations for cougars. This is the center view drawing of a kinetic painting called Mountain Mama. The left view, it's two originals. So that's one original. The center view, you're seeing both originals at the same time and the right view the other original. They're sawed apart and put together on angles. And so, of course, the inspiration for the cougar. The blue glass in the eye came from Stevensville, from Sandy and Jim. Uh, piles and piles of rock from Sam. And these buckets of rock from Eric. And I wanted to tell you now, Eric brought the red tiles, and this is the first piece I ever used red tiles. This steep is extremely so. Slope is very steep. It is very unstable. I bury the tile into the sand, and I literally create stair steps going up. I can stand on one tile to get to the next tile. You'll see more of that later on. So here's my cougar. This is Aletha and she brought me lots of jars and bottles. And I put banded in here so you could see how big this piece is. From ear to elbow, it is about 45 feet. The tourists started coming. We have a lot of people up there at the dam now taking a look at the artwork. And uh, I was walking along one day, there was a roadrunner ahead of me and I started taking pictures of it and the clicking sound of the camera brought him right up to me. He stayed by me for a long time, walking along almost like a little dog by me. And every time I clicked, he cocked his head and looked at me. And this is beep beep. And there is a whiptail lizard in the corner and I ended up doing a piece with a whiptail lizard. It's a roadrunner, desert circle of life with the roadrunner and the whiptail lizard. And this is my little roadrunner. It's only about three feet across, maybe three and a half. But this is my big roadrunner. I started with the Zia design. This is the beginning of the head and the eye. <clears throat> this is a uh, drainage pipe that I built with tile. There's a steep slope and an erosion potential here where the water runs down to this point. So I built this ditch, dug out a ditch, filled it with tile, reversed the tile to make a, a tube so the water could run down. 
This is the beginning of the tail using um, bottles, green bottles. Everything is, the tail's getting longer and bigger. I think this piece is about 55 feet from tip to tip. Okay, remember that ditch I made, the, the drainage um, system? Well, I thought I had built it for drainage, but this little cottontail right here, that little fuzzball down there, he's using it for a hutch. Here's a nice view of the Roadrunner back ways. This is a falcon, a kestrel. These are, that's an acrylic. And the beginning of my falcon. This is that staircase system I was telling you about. Each tile has to be filled with sand and packed so that I can stand on it without breaking it. And each step gets me to the next step all the way up. And here's the view to show you how steep that slope is. This is Sam and he is filling in the background with rocks. He has done all the background on, the, on these pieces with his rocks. Some of these rocks must weigh 50, 60, 70 pounds. I don't know, they're huge. I wouldn't be able to lift them. My hummingbird feeder. This one is a painting called Paint the Town. It's a print. And this is bird, uh, the bird of paradise is called a touch of paradise. This is my little tiny hummingbird. It's probably about six feet in a heart. And this is the beginning of my big hummingbird in a heart. Here's Bandit to show you scale. I love that view of the wing in the sky. All the clear jars, this is how high it is. Uh, the red jars were actually clear jars like mayonnaise and peanut butter and whatever we could find, the wide opening. And I painted the inside with sign paint, red sign paint. That's a nice overall view of the hummingbird. This heart was an area where we were dumping rocks and uh, to build the hummingbird. So the hummingbird has a uh, heart has all the large rocks and the rubble that was left over, I pushed into the shape of a heart and trimmed it with tile and rocks inside. It wasn't in the original plan. It got added on later. When I lift up tiles, I oftentimes will find whiptail lizards underneath. This is one I found. And here's the beginning of the whiptail lizard. This piece is probably 60 or 70 feet. I don't think we've measured it, but I know it's longer than the Roadrunner. Lots of bottles. Lots of people have brought bottles to me. Toro Rock Quarry up in Oregon, New Mexico, outside of Las Cruces, has contributed tons and tons of rock for this project. Uh, this is a pit where I get some of the white marble that I use. And um, this is a machine that's sorting rocks on a conveyor belt, and they're going to be used by me. So they're going down the conveyor belt into the front end loader, and then the loader is gonna put them into the trailer.
watch this boulder. I'm going to point it out to you later on as to where it ended up in the artwork. All of this part, all of this white rock is going on the lizard. The new hip tilted. And this is Eric's uh, trailer with a lift on it. That big rock is right up there. Oh, yeah, it's great. It landed just where I wanted it. And there's that big boulder. We actually just rolled it over there a little way. We, uh, Sam, rolled it over there a little ways. Lots of uh, different ideas for turquoise rocks and the lizard. I used jars and painted the inside of the jars with turquoise paint and began creating the turquoise tail on the lizard. The lizard's not finished in this picture, but here it is finished. Baby bears, my friend Kathleen Ramsey is a vet that uh, rescues orphan bears and then releases them in the spring. And I get lots of good pictures. This is Sugar Bear. There's a story on this with the Tanner Gallery. Um, we saw a mama and two baby bears walking through the parking lot. And after a year later, I came back to the gallery with an inspired painting. This is Cinnamon and Sugar. And we're gonna start on the bear, the eye the nose and the eye, lots of tile. This is from the top down, showing how steep it is. Lots of bottles, 240 bottles after a snow. We had a snow not too long ago in the fog. And this is um, a ram I photographed and it inspired a painting called The Shadows of the Future. And this, I'm currently working on this piece of artwork, so it's not done. I'm going to take you all the way up to this morning. This is day after day. This is halfway up, it's pretty tall. That's all the way up. That's the curve of the horn and an ear. More of the horn, the eye. kind of an overall view. I think that was yesterday, day before yesterday, <laughs> today, hard to remember. Um, this is a, another drone footage from Stuart Whitehead I wanted to share with you. He hovered the drone very close and then shoots up high into the air. So you get a close up and a distant view.
this sh uh, shot from a drone is uh, by Patrick Matthew Montelongo, and it is a more recent picture because you can see I've got the bear and um, the ram started, and they weren't in um, Stuart's pictures because I, I I hadn't finished the the lizard. And this is Tanner Tradition Gallery in Rio Dosa, New Mexico, and Kathy Tanner. And there is Lynn and Kathy Tanner and their three babies. And this is my baby. This is a life-size pony that I painted for Trail of the Painted Ponies called Horse Feathers. And my art can be seen at the Tanner Tradition. So drone video, thank you, Stuart Whitehead, Patrick Montel Montelongo. Um, if you have any questions that don't get answered during this presentation, please join both of our emails, tannertradition.com or kathymorrowstudio.com and um, ask your question and we will try to answer it for you. <laughs>